everybody. It's good to be back. Sorry I've been missing in action, but um, some things have come up that make it not so easy to do things on a Tuesday. So uh, in future, this will probably change to another day or it will be pre-recorded. That being said, I have three books for you today. I have That Pesky Rat, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, and The Witch's Children. So let's get started. First one is That Pesky Rat. This is me. I'm the one with the pointy nose and beady eyes, the cutesy one, in the middle. I live in dustbin number three, Grubby Alley. Every now and again I come back to find someone has emptied all my belongings into a big van and driven off with them. It's very upsetting. I'm a brown rat, a street rat. But people call me that pesky rat. I don't know why. They say I smell, but it's not my fault. It's the dirt. Sometimes when I'm tucked into my crisp packet, I look up at all the cozy windows and wonder what it would be like to live with creature comforts, to belong to somebody, to be an actual pet. Most of all, I would like to have a name instead of just... That pesky rat. My friend Pierre, who is a chinchilla, is looked after by a rich lady called Madame Fifi. He has a very glamorous life. He lives in the lap of luxury. I say, I would quite like to live in a fashionable apartment and be fed chocolates while I sit on a feather cushion. Mm. I'm not sure chocolates are really healthy for chinchillas, though. Pierre says, It's not all cushions and chocolates. Madame Fifi has me shampooed at the pet parlor once a week. I hate having baths. I think I'm allergic to soap. So maybe that's not the best place for him. Then there's these Siamese cat there's this Siamese cat called Oscar. He lives with Mr. Washington, a busy businessman. Mr. Washington is always at work, so he doesn't have time to wash fur or be strict. If I lived there, I could do whatever I liked. I think my cats think this as well. They think they can do whatever they like. Oscar says, doing whatever you want can get a bit tiring after a while. I sometimes get a bit bored watching the same old shows on TV. I even have to get my own supper. Now, I'm quite good in the kitchen, but I hate to be bored. Mm, So maybe that's not the best place for that pesky rat. A lop-eared rabbit I know called Nibbles works in a circus with Mr. Hoopla. It must be so exciting. Never a dull moment. Swinging on the trapeze in one minute and tiptoeing on the high wire the next. Hmm. Does sound like an exciting life. I've always wanted to run away and join the circus, I have to admit. This is my greatest dream. Unfortunately, I have no circus-worthy talents, but I still dream. Nibbles says, It is fun hopping through hoops in a tutu, but sometimes I could do with taking off the clown's nose and putting my feet up. (sighs) Maybe it's all a bit nerve-wracking for me. Hmm. So maybe the circus isn't a great place either. I think I'd quite like one of those owners who do lots of sitting about like Miss St. Clair. Her Scotty dog, Andrew, is always sitting by the fire, having supper on a tray, and they spend the evenings doing puzzles together. Hmm. Does sound nice. 
Andrew says, on the whole, I feel very well looked after. And Miss St. Clair is good company, but it's rather embarrassing when we go out shopping. Miss St. Clair makes Andrew wear a little hat and coat. I don't think clothes would suit me, but I would do anything to be somebody's pet. Small face is going to make an appearance soon. He'd do anything to be somebody's pet too. But he's just a crazy cat. So in the morning, I go to the pet shop and ask Mrs. Trill if she has an owner who might want me. She says, there isn't much call for brown rats. I'm afraid you aren't very popular with the public. And I say, I don't see why not. I'm very good company, always popping up when you least expect me to. And I'm happy to eat anything, even if it's been slightly nibbled. And Mrs. Trill says, well, you could always make a notice and put it in the window. You never know. So I write, brown rat looking for kind, kindly, kindly owner. His handwriting is really bad. Brown rat looking for kindly owner with an interest in cheese. Hobbies include nibbling and chewing. Would like a collar with my name on. Would like a name. Would prefer no baths. Will wear a jumper if pushed. Yours keenly, brown rat rat. That pesky rat. P.S. Sorry about bad paw writing. It's very bad. It's hard to read. Not a very good picture of me. Me. So he's written his advertisement for the shop. And then I wait and I wait and I wait until mm, all those other pets. Mm -mm. On Tuesday, old Mr. Fortescue is passing and he stops to look at my notice. He has to really squint because he has such bad eyesight. And then he looks at me and says, My, haven't you got a pointy nose? And goodness me, what a long tail and such unusual beady eyes. I'll take him. I can't believe my luck. And nor can Mrs. Trill. Mrs. Trill says, are you sure? And Mr. Fortescue says, Fortescue says, oh yes, I've been looking for a brown cat as nice as this one for ages. Mrs. Trill looks at me and I look at Mrs. Trill and we both look at my notice, but neither of us says a word. Shh. I just love being a pet, and I am trying to be really helpful. I pick out the best cheeses by using my excellent sniffing nose. I clean the kitchen by nibbling up the crumbs. I help Mr. Fortescue cross the road by scaring the traffic. And I'm always there when he comes home. So here I am, finally a pet with a name. So what if I have to wear a little jumper? Mr. Fortescue says, well, Tiddles, who's a pretty kitty cat? And I squeak, I am. And that's the end. So this book was made in conjunction with UNESCO, and then there's a lot of information about raising money for UNESCO and some of the children that it helps, and all the different programs and places that there's um, UNESCO helps for children in need. So there you go. The second book we have today is Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Let me just check to make sure I'm still rolling. Yeah, we're good. Okay. Goldilocks and the Three Bears.
One morning, Goldilocks's mother sent her to buy muffins in the next village. You must promise not to take the shortcut through the forest, she said. I've heard that bears live there. I promise, said Goldilocks. But to tell the truth, Goldilocks was one of those naughty little girls who do exactly as they please. Once there was a little... Hmm... I think maybe <laughs> somebody has put these pages together in the wrong order because <laughs> this should be the first page. <laughs> okay, so let me read those in the right order again. I've lent these books out for a very long time to somebody and obviously somebody's kid has, you know, pulled the pages out, which does happen sometimes with kids' books. Sometimes kids are very enthusiastic about books and or they don't want to read, maybe. And this person, whoever it is that has prepared this book, has put the page in backwards. So it's quite funny. <laughs> so once there was a little girl called Goldilocks. What a sweet child, said someone new in town. That's what you think, said a neighbor. Whew, she doesn't look so sweet to me. I don't know. One morning, Goldilocks's mother sent her to buy muffins in the next village. You must promise not to take the shortcut through the forest, she said. I've heard that bears live there. I promise, said Goldilocks. But to tell the truth, Goldilocks was one of those naughty little girls who do exactly as they please. And there she is going through the shortcut. Danger, very risky, not a good idea. Turn back, go the other way. There's a squirrel going, hey, don't go down there. And Goldilocks going, <laughs> Meanwhile, in a clearing deeper inside the forest, in a charming house all of their own, a family of brown bears was sitting down to breakfast. Tui cried big old Papa Bear. This porridge is scalding. I burned my tongue. I'm dying, cried Baby Bear. Now really, said Mama Bear, who is of medium size, that's quite enough. I know, said Papa Bear. Why don't we go for a spin while the porridge is cooling? Excellent, said Mama Bear. So they got on their rusty old bicycle and off they went. There's Papa Bear saying, Tra-la-la, tra-la, da-da-da. A few minutes later, Goldilocks arrived at the bear's house. She walked right in without even bothering to knock. On the dining room table were three inviting bowls of porridge. I don't mind if I do said Goldilocks, helping herself to the biggest bowl. I have to admit, when I was a kid, my mother used to make me porridge quite a lot. And I hated it. So if I was Goldilocks and I was walking through the forest and I saw a big bowl of porridge in somebody's house, I wouldn't even be tempted to eat it. Although nowadays, I guess it's better. But the porridge in the biggest bowl was much too hot. But Tui! cried Goldilocks, and she spat it out. Next, she tasted the porridge in the medium-sized bowl. Oh, excuse me. But that porridge was much too cold. Then Goldilocks tasted the porridge in the little bowl, and it was just right, neither too hot nor too cold. In fact, she liked it so much that she gobbled it all up. Now, doesn't this make so much more sense if she found a bunch of chocolate? Because... It's a bowl filled with chocolate. Mm, I'd be more inclined to eat it. Feeling full and satisfied, Goldilocks thought it would be great fun to have a look around. Right away, she noticed a lot of coarse brown fur everywhere. They must have kitties, she said. In the parlor, there were three chairs. I don't mind if I do, she said, climbing into the biggest one. But the biggest chair was much too hard, and she just couldn't get comfortable. 
Next, she sat in the medium-sized chair, but that chair was much too soft, and she thought she might never get out of it. Then Goldilocks sat in the little chair, and it was just right, neither too hard nor too soft. In fact, she liked it so much that she rocked and rocked until the chair fell completely to pieces. It's a weird thing to do, isn't it? Go inside somebody's house, eat their food, and break their furniture. Very weird. Now all that rocking left Goldilocks quite tuckered out. I could take a little snooze, she said. So she went to look for a comfy place to nap. Upstairs were three beds. I don't mind if I do, said Goldilocks, and she got into the biggest one. But the head that's the top of the biggest bed was much too high. Look, look at those slippers. Aren't they enormous and very funny? Next, she tried the medium-sized bed, but the head of the bed was much too low. Then Goldilocks tried the little bed, and it was just right. And soon she was all nice and cozy and sound asleep, and she did not hear the bears come home. The three bears were mighty hungry, but when they went in for breakfast, they could scarcely believe their eyes. Somebody has been in my porridge, said Papa Bear. Somebody has been in my porridge, said Mama Bear. Somebody's been in my porridge, said Baby Bear, and eaten it all up. Mm. In the parlor, the three bears were in for another little surprise. Somebody has been sitting in my chair, said Papa Bear. Somebody has been sitting in my chair, said Mama Bear. Somebody's been sitting in my chair, said Baby Bear, and broken it to smithereens. Yeah, that's what a rude thing to do, right? The three bears went upstairs on tiptoe not knowing what they would discover. At first, everything seemed fine, but then Papa Bear lay down on his big brass bed. Somebody has been lying in my bed, he cried, and he was not amused. Nor would I be. Phew! Egads, cried Mama Bear. Somebody has been lying in my bed. Look, cried Baby Bear. Somebody has been lying in my bed, and she's still there. Now see here, roared Papa Bear. Goldilocks woke up with a start, and her eyes nearly popped out of her head. But before the bears could demand a proper explanation, Goldilocks was out of bed, out the window, and on her way home. Who was that little girl? asked Baby Bear. I have no idea, said Mama Bear, but I hope we never see her again. And they never did. And that's the end. There's Goldilocks running away. Cheeky child. Okay. Your last book today is The Witch's Children. And we've read one of the witch's children before. We read the witch's children and the queen. But this is just the witch's children. Let me get it centered here. There we go. I love this illustrator, Russell Ito. I think he's really super awesome. And I like the story from this too. The witch's children. One windy day, the witch's children went to the park. There they are. The biggest one, the middle one, and the littlest one, and all their friends and pets. Look out, said the pigeons. Here come the witch's children. And they flew into the trees. Look out, said the squirrels. The witch's children are coming, and that means trouble. 
and they ran up the tree trunks into the wind-tossed trees. It's very windy this day, isn't it? It was quite crowded up there. The witch's children bought ice creams from the ice cream lady. The eldest and the middle one bought two each. And the little one bought three. Wow. I never got to have that many ice creams when I was a kid. So far, no trouble, said the pigeons to the squirrels. So far. The witch's children came to the pond. Gemma was sailing her boat. The wind blew whoosh, and blew whoosh, and blew the boat over. Whoosh. Oh, no, shouted Gemma. Who will save my little boat from sinking? Mm. I will, said the eldest one, and he changed Gemma into a frog. Mm. Swim out and rescue your boat, said the eldest one to the frog. So Gemma did. There she is, getting the boat and coming back. That was fun, said Gemma. Change me back now, please. Can't said the eldest one. I haven't learned how to do that yet. And the frog cried and cried. Now we've got trouble, cooed the pigeons, and the little one laughed and laughed and laughed until she fell over. Don't worry, Gemma, said the middle one to the frog. Watch. What's she going to do? Mm -mm. And she changed the trees into a huge palace. And she changed the ice cream van into a golden coach. And the pigeons into fat footmen. And the ice cream lady into a fair princess. And the squirrels into smart soldiers. Kiss the frog, said the witch's child to the princess. Now, everybody knows when, he ki when a princess kisses a frog, it turns into a handsome prince. So let's see if that happens here. So the princess did. And the frog turned into a handsome prince. That's no good, said the prince. I want to be Gemma. Change us all back. Yes, snapped the princess. This coach is filled with melted ice cream. Change us back. Can't, said the middle one. I haven't learned how to do that yet. Now we're in trouble, sighed the footman to the soldiers. And the little one laughed and laughed until she split her trousers. Yeah. Stop that! They all shouted, and get us out of trouble. And the little one felt sorry she'd laughed at them. I only know one bit of magic. Well, try it, they all said. And the little one opened her mouth wide and yelled. Whoosh! Out of the clouds flew the witch on her broomstick. She changed the handsome prince back into Gemma, the fair princess back into the ice cream lady, the golden coach back into the ice cream van, the smart soldiers back into squirrels, and the fat footmen back into pigeons, and the huge palace back into the trees, and they were all happy. Especially the little one. And the witch's children flew home on her broomstick. For tea. And that's the end. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. It was really good to have you here today. 
and I hope to see you all again sometime soon. Take care.